as we dive in here, uh, you know, I think, it, and I don't want to talk, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I do think it's real easy to feel better about the economy as we sit here in 2023 than if we were sitting here a year ago. Uh, inflation has gotten a little bit better. It's cooled off. Uh, the market has rebounded. But there are certainly, there are certainly a lot of headwinds. And if you read multiple economists, which I don't, I just read you. I don't read anybody <laughs> else. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, if you read multiple economists, there's a real divergence of thought as to what these headwinds, what kind of impact these headwinds are going to have uh, on the future of the U.S. economy. So as, before we do the deep dive, if you could just start off with kind of your bird's eye view of the, the current health of the U.S. economy. So I do, I do these talks a lot. I, th I think one of the best analogies that I've come up with to answer your question is the analogy of, we got, we got to know our history, right? That the post-World War II economy is a really great way to inform ourselves in the post-pandemic economy. And I'll, I'll explain that. One, one of the reasons why I think that this is very helpful uh, in just very kind of in cursory responses, you know, we actually had two consecutive quarters of negative growth in 1947. Of course, you have to go back a little bit in time, right? When the last time we had negative uh, growth, two quarters with no recession, that happened in 2022 and it happened in 1947. Think about post-World War U.S. People were shifting around, right? Coming back from war, pulling out of the labor force, taking advantage of GI bills. You know, my grandmother was a seamstress, uh, so she was a, a first-generation Polish girl from Buffalo, moved, found herself in Buffalo, New York, uh, the opposite of... Uh, weather patterns than Arkansas. <laughs> uh, so if you know anything about lake effect, uh, you know that you know something about Buffalo. But going into the war, right, so here's the seamstress. She's making curtains. She's making all the, you know, the normal home furnishings. Shifts over to cots, right? Any, anything related to military. Think about Cadillac. Cadillac made hardly any just, uh, you know, regular engine cars, you know, civilian cars, they shifted to M1 light tanks for our allies in Europe. After the war, there's this huge gyration of, of labor capital. I think that's a, that's a great way, kind of the bird's eye view mm -hmm. of where we are in 2023 relative to kind of this transition from a, a, a world where, you know, governments were coming in and saying, you can't do business anymore. <laughs> right. They shut things down. As things reopened, as things, you know, were shut down longer and longer, you know, you had people moving around. Yeah, I can't be, a, you know, sit at home if I own a restaurant. I'm, I'm moving to another uh, sector. So a post-World War II economy informs our view about a post-pandemic economy. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. We can yeah. talk a lot about that, but it's it's a fascinating way. I'll, I'll, I'll add one more comment, and that is, I think in so many ways, where we are right now in, a, in, in this world where there are certain sectors that are doing great, and then certain sectors not so much. I think a lot of it is you harken back, think of your, your uh, junior high days or elementary school days, you, f you first go to a quarry, the first time you ever go to a cave or, a, or even at the lake, and you, you try out your echo, right? Okay. Echo, you know, you, you wait, well, we got a little one here, I think. There, there's that delay, right? You yell something, and you got that little bit of delay from your yell, it goes out, bounces, comes back to you. I think a lot of that, I think, Ill is illustrative of why we're not in recession yet, yeah. even though we might have some headwinds.